A spectator causes a huge pileup in the third GC day in a row. We're in the Alps. This last stage before the rest day, stage 15, and this is over 4,000 meters climbing once again with a mountaintop finish this time. The Amaral Saint Gervais Mont Blanc finish. It's 2.7 k's, 10% short descent, and then 7 k's, 7%. Very irregular. Lots of KOM points on offer. So an important day for Ciccone, Paulus, as well as obviously the GC battle currently neck and neck between Pagacha and Jonas Vingegaard. And Trek wanted to get in that break straight away. Ciccone, Pedersen jumping with him. But the wrong move went. Paulus with a tug buddy, and then it's Sturven from Trek. He's not the guy they want in. Van der Poel, O'Connor. And so all of a sudden, Trek are really on the back foot, having to chase full gas with Galapan to get Ciccone, Juanpe, and Schelmos are in because Paulus in the polka dots is going up the road with a strong group for some free KOM points. So really interesting break formation. A counter move went from Van Aert, Soler on orders. When the Tigers jump, you go with him, tied to Van Aert's wheel to get into that breakaway. And here's Jumbo Visma pacing behind with Van Bala and a lot of riders up the road. Short leash though, Lushenko and Alaphilippe danced out. You can see it's only 15 seconds between this huge break group and the peloton. No guarantee they wouldn't get closed down until there was a huge crash caused by a spectator Van Hoydonk and Kuz go down hard. Here you can see him on the right in the white bucket hat facing the other way, taking a selfie. His arm isn't that far in the road at this point. And then he moves his arm down into Coos at the last minute for whatever reason. No one cares about your social media posts, bro. I know that from personal experience. And just takes Coos out. Van Hoydonk's next to Coos. He goes down really, really hard. So not the start Jumbo Visma we're expecting. At least Vingegaard and the others didn't go down and no one abandoned immediately. But yeah, Van Hoydonk pretty banged up. He continued. But how would that affect Jumbo Visma's plans for the day? A note on the radio. Were they going to pace? And this just means this neutralization that the break goes. It gets six and a half minutes. Alaphilippe and Lushenko, for whatever reason, just ride on the front in front of a strong breakaway, killing their legs. I have no idea what they were doing. And their director should have called them back before four class where they would get caught, I think, just after that. Laporte starts pacing with a gap, went to 840, and here you see the KOM battle in earnest. Woods wasn't on a good one today. Juan Pei and EF swapping off turns, trying to make sure they actually catch Alaphilippe and Lushenko so maximum KOM points are on offer. They weren't able to. Chikone wins the sprint for third. And yeah, Coos banged up. Look at that right elbow, the premium mountain domestique for Vingegaard. How would that affect the stage in the uphill finish? Some nasty up and down in the middle between uh, Fry or Free. And then Juanpe kicks it in for Ciccone again, whilst Jumbo Visma begin to increase the pace behind with Van Bala. But you can see Ciccone was already a bit beleaguered. Soler looked like he was struggling at the back, but Ciccone is chasing Costa. Schelmos is also chasing for Ciccone, so they're all in on the KOM battle. But look at Soler. You can't fool me. You were faking. Because he immediately, in the last 750 meters when Schelmos is riding full gas, just rides easily up the side of this whole group that's strung out and gets onto Wout Van Aert's wheel, like fifth wheel, where he's supposed to be before the top. So you're a faker, Daker. I see you, Mark Soler. Ciccone gets the points he wanted, maximum points on that cat one, but he's kind of, yeah, really tired at this point. And so Soler hits him on the Arrow V, the last climb before an undulating 25Ks. What were UAE planning? Was he a satellite rider? If so, it's very unusual for a satellite rider to attack out of a breakaway that has a very healthy gap, six minutes on the peloton, and Van Aert the same. So clearly both going for the stage. Van Aert pulls and Nalens catch up with him on the descent, but Nalens crashed, unfortunately, having an issue with the moto. And so the three of them, pulls Van Aert, Soler, two potential satellite riders, actually start to work really well in the valley. And you can forget about this group. You can see EF, Trek, and Co, they're no longer driving this breakaway. And so there's, yeah, Group 2 Syndrome takes over. And the winner from the, for the stage will come from these three. Although they tried to drop Soler on the descent again before the final climb, they do succeed in doing so. And how much would that affect his legs chasing two outs in the valley? We would see, here's the first climb, the Amaron climb, super steep. Van Aert needs to make it over this if he has any chance. And as Soler returns to the trio, Walt Pools, who's never won a Grand Tour stage, 
hits Wow Van Aert who can't respond on the steep gradients and goes clear, getting a very, very healthy gap straight away. Back in the GC group though, Yumbo ripping it, causing splits for Yates again, but it's UAE who dominated this final climb. Björk starting at a super hard pace, then Groschartner cycling through their mountain train. Pidcock starting to swing, and we know it's Micah next as Pools gets over that steep section before the Betex climb. And here, Van Aert's already on 40 seconds as Groschartner gets over the top. Micah now, he really starts to drop people. Koos is behind, but note is still there. Rodriguez, Hinley's dropped with Yates. And now Koos drops as Micah finishes his pull. He finishes it hard and hands over to Yates. Should Van Aert have waited at this point? He's on 124 to pulls. He's never catching him. Should he have sat up with this group four or five minutes behind to see if he could offer assistance in any way to Vingegaard, who's now isolated? He could get dropped by Pagacha at this point with Yates riding for a long time on the front. Soler's up the road for UAE as well, and he is kind of waiting but pulls goes clear. A really impressive performance, faster from the breakaway than all the GC contenders except like Pagacha, Vingegaard, and Carlos Rodriguez. Huge performance from Walt Pulls, well deserved Tour de France stage. But behind him, some of the most curious things I've seen, Pagacha presses the lap button. They've got over 1.7 Ks to go, they've still got like 3 Ks to go. Presses his lap button. And Adam Yates is really hard on the pedals here. And Pagacha. First, he slides off when Yates is pulling, looking at his power meter, looks, but then he goes straight back to his wheel. So, okay, was he trying to get Vingegaard to fill the gap? But then Yates gets out of the saddle here to accelerate a little bit, and Pagacha, he just lets the wheel go. So I don't know whether he was on the limit a little bit, but he could. he's in his right to tell Yates his domestic to slow down, but then his shoulders really start swinging. It looks like he's faking, and we'll see later he's got a big burst. Rodriguez comes back after they surplus, but yeah, Pagach is kind of on a gap every time Vingegaard gets out of the saddle. But UAE have two riders up the road, although Soler was pulling Yates initially, which was curious. It was like pulling a satellite rider for Yates' third GC bid. And Pagach is still laying off Vingegaard with 1,500 meters to go. Hits him with the expected big attack, but not like on Grand Colombier. Not like on Puy de Dome and not like on the Juplin. Vingegaard easily in the wheel today. A little bit more reminiscent of the third week last year. Pagacha gets to his satellite riders. Can they crack Vingegaard a la Wout van Aert Altecam style? Not today. Vingegaard responds and in fact counters Pagacha at the end going around him the long way. And then sitting up to let Pagacha cross the line ahead of him. Mind games at play, question mark. But what do you think? Was Pagacha bluffing or was he really struggling today? Did Vingegaard miss an opportunity? Pulls wins the stage ahead of Van Aert, then Bergado, Kranich, Lander, Pino, Schilmer, Zaguliami, Bargui. No changes to the top two. Rodriguez's lead in third is narrowed to Adam Yates. Hindley loses more time and Koos maintains his sixth position despite the crash today. Bill Bilbao losing some time. 